Hello friends, my name is Manifesto, and today we are going to get right back in where we left off on our Slime Fun tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about early game dust generation using basic machines. If you haven't seen my basic machines video and you feel like there's something you might learn from it, uh, I, in it I cover all basic machines and their uses and how to make them. Uh, you can click the video right here, and otherwise, let's get right into it. Alright, so I went ahead and made all the basic machines we're going to need for our early game dust generation, minus a few key ones, but that you're not going to have access to right as soon as you start up in your slime fun career. Now this is already after you've unlocked things, here we have our enhanced crafting table, here we have our grindstone, here we have our automated panning machine, here we have our ore washer, and here we have our smeltery. This is all we're really going to need in order to get started with generating dusts early game. To start off, we're going to need to get gravel. Now there's two ways of going about this. We can either get gravel, just as it is, or we can get cobblestone and then turn that into gravel using our grindstone. In order to instamine gravel, you need a netherite shovel with efficiency 3. However, in order to instamine stone, in order to get cobblestone, you need an efficiency 5 pickaxe with haste 2. So if you have access to haste 2, efficiency 5, that might be the route for you. Otherwise, personally, I prefer netherite shovel with efficiency 3, and that's enough to get gravel. Of course, gravel is much less common than stone, obviously. But I'm going to show you a couple easy places to find gravel in large quantities so that you can smooth out that early game way before you get access to slime fun tools, which will make it a lot easier to get massive amounts of stone and other materials uh, in large quantities. Obviously, there's a lot of gravel at the bottom of the ocean, but I don't recommend this because obviously in a lukewarm ocean, there's going to be just sand at the bottom. And also, even in a deep ocean or cold ocean, that gravel at the bottom is only going to be one block deep. And that's not really worth it. We want large quantities in, in groups that we can actually work with. There's going to be some in mining uh, in the overworld, but where we're going to really find a lot of great deposits is going to be in the nether. So here we are in the nether. Personally, I recommend Soul Sand Valleys. Uh, I find that they're the easiest to find those near lava deposits of lots and lots of gravel. Uh, even this is a kind of small one, but as you can see, trailing all along the lava, there are these massive deposits of gravel. As long as you're careful and you don't, you know, walk on this and, yeah, fall into the lava, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, just make sure to either bring some fire protection potions with you, a couple gapples, good armor, just, you know, general Minecraft be safe. Uh, but there is enough gravel here to really kick off your early game without having to worry about going and mining a ton of cobble, grinding for hours. So the other place where we can find gravel pretty easily, though not as easily as finding it on the surface of the nether, is when we're netherite mining. So here I am at Y15. When we're netherite mining, oftentimes we'll be insta-mining these massive tunnels. I'm not insta-mining right now because, of course, I'm in creative. But sometimes we're going to find gravel in these tunnels. Now, those gravel sources can be pretty big, pretty small. It all depends on your RNG. However, if you're already netherite mining, it, it makes sense to go through those tunnels and grab the gravel veins as they are. But if you're not netherite mining, it definitely makes more sense to just go ahead and stick with the surface gravel in our soul sand valleys in the nether. All right, so if you went the nether route, you already have your gravel and in large quantities. And so we're just going to put that in a chest right over here. Uh, if you went the stone route, then what I would suggest you do is you put a hopper right here on your grindstone and then put a chest on top of that hopper. Store all of your cobblestone in here. So let's get some cobblestone right quick. And we're just going to put that cobblestone in there so that it automatically feeds into our grindstone so we don't have to constantly be sticking cobble in, taking gravel out. And then we can just right click and we get gravel. Now here's a key tip that's going to save you a lot of time in Slime Fun. What you want to do is you, whenever you're doing Slime Fun, you want to go into your options, controls, and you want to find your use item place block that's usually set to right button. We're going to go ahead and for us, we're going to set that to R. Now, instead of right clicking and it only doing one and me having to get carpal tunnel spamming uh, my right click button, I can just hold down R. And we just did about a stack and a half in what, a couple seconds. And so that's that definitely saves me a lot of time and a lot of effort when I'm trying to do just about anything in Slime Fun. Just make sure you don't overdo it or you know put more materials than you mean to craft inside a crafting chamber uh, so that you don't end up 
wasting some materials. So now we have a little bit of gravel. What we're going to do is we're going to take that gravel and we're going to go to our automated panning machine and we're just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to hold down R. And there we go. So we got about two stacks of flint, a good amount of sifted ore, some clay balls, and some iron nuggets. Now these are largely considered either waste or byproducts of your sifting. Your real goal here is the sifted ore. Personally, I don't like throwing things away because I'm a hoarder, so I just make a bunch of big chests and stick all of the flint, all the clay balls, and all of the iron nuggets in separate chests. Though you are going to need a little bit of flint later on in Slime Fun, and you can turn flint back into cobblestone with slime fun. I personally don't find it as effective. So for me, I just suggest hoarding it all in some massive chests and touching maybe a few stacks of it and wasting a bunch of space. I'm kidding. You can just throw it away if you want to. So we're going to go ahead and put our waste products in here and move on with our sifted ore. Now that we have the sifted ore, we can go ahead and put it in the ore washer to separate it into its separate ore types. So we're going to go ahead and do that and immediately it runs out of inventory space because there are so many different ore types as well as the stone chunks that we're going to inevitably get from using a manual ore washer. Once we automate it, we're not going to have this problem, but there are nine different dust types that we're getting from washing and only nine spaces in here plus the stone chunks. Basically, we're always going to be running out of room. That's why we're only going to be doing it like this for a little bit. So first, let's go ahead and put down some chests so we can store those dusts somewhere. So here we have all nine double chests with little item frames on top. So it makes it easier for us to remember which is which. Uh, we have all nine dust types, copper dust, iron dust, silver dust, gold dust, lead dust, tin dust, magnesium, aluminum dust, and zinc dust. Of these, be aware that throughout Slime Fun, from beginning to end, the thing you're always going to be running out of is copper dust. It is definitely the limiting reagent for most paths in Slime Fun, so make sure you stock up on copper dust, though you don't really have a choice when you're making it all yourself. Now that we have a place to store all of this and a fire to burn our stone chunks in, though of course we can turn them into cobblestone, I personally don't think it's worth your time. We're going to go ahead and finish up with our sifted ore. Now this is going to be painfully slow in the beginning because our inventory space is going to keep running out. Now there is a solution to this, don't worry. All we have to do is get enough lead. There we go, we have six lead. So now we have all of these dust. We're going to go ahead and put them in our chests and but keep five lead. All right, now that we have this five lead, we can go ahead and start making our first output chest. Remember I said in the last video, the output chest is the most important basic machine. It makes your life so much easier. Please make yourself some output chests and each one only takes five lead dust, a hopper and a chest as we can see in our slime fun guide. Output chest, five lead ingots, hopper and a chest. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our smeltery, put five lead dust in, right click up here, so, little mistake from our last video. Uh, I was thinking about an earlier version of Slime Fun where your automatic ignition chamber needed to be pointed into the fire. However, in this version, in Slime Fun 4, your automatic ignition chamber needs to be pointed into your dispenser. So, I'm going to go ahead and relight this fire, and we're going to see exactly how this works. There you go. And now the fire is not going to go out until the automatic ignition chamber is out of flint and steel. So now that we have our five lead ingots, let's go ahead and make our output chest. So we're just going to go into our enhanced crafting table, put our lead ingots down, our hopper, and our chest. Right click, or press the R key if you're doing it my way, and take out our output chest. Now our first output chest we're going to want to put right here because the output chest is ridiculously useful when it comes to the ore washer. We're no longer going to have to worry about it filling up every few uses. So now that we have our output chest, we can go ahead and continue finding more gravel to turn into sifted ore to wash in the ore washer to turn into our separate dusts so we can start having a little bit of a stockpile of each one and also create our output chests for our other machines. Now, there are only a couple scenarios in which we don't want to use an output chest with our smeltery. That's when we're trying to create steel or when we're trying to mass produce 24 karat gold. Both of those scenarios we'll talk about in future videos when we actually come to a point where we're requiring them. As far as very early game 
dust creation goes, this is all we need. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please consider subscribing for future videos. It's free. It only takes two seconds. You can always unsubscribe later. And it helps me out a ton because at this point, you're basically increasing my subscriber count by... 20, 30, 40% for each one of you that subscribes. Also, if you happen to have any questions, please leave a comment and I will do my absolute best to get back to you with answers as soon as possible. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to make those happen. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.